Uh, all right, here we go. We are rolling. It is time for another episode of Cash's Top Five. And joining me for the second time, we have the lovely Stephanie Mead. How are you, dear? I am doing good. Yeah. How are you? Uh, doing wonderful. Uh, enjoying this good. meteorological spring that started yesterday. I'm going to show off some knowledge there. Um, mm-hmm. Doing very well. And I will say, so the first episode we did, we ranked our top five most hated Christmas songs, which... That's what you want around the holidays is hatred. So we were going to be exactly. a little more positive this time. Right. And uh, we're going to be ranking something that we both said was very difficult. I'm mm-hmm. still not happy with my final five, honestly. I've been, we were going to do this yesterday and I've since changed my list again. So that's just how it works. So okay. what, are we ranking? what are we ranking? What's our so, top five for today? We are ranking top five 2000 movies. And I thought it was difficult Um, but I am really set in my top five. Like these are, I don't feel like they might not be in order of like one through five, what I think is the best, but I think they're, they're pretty, they're pretty good. At least I think, I think so. At least I think so. (laughs) So did you want to, before we get started, do you want to write down or just jot down a couple of private notes, guessing what might be in my top five? And I'll write down a couple that I think might be in yours based on total stereotypes and generalizations. I I have a feeling you're going to get mine right though. Okay. Yeah. I, dang, I already told you about one, I think, but I'll mention it again. Um, uh, I'm going to have to think I'm going to, I'm hoping that you spill the beans about the others <laughs> while okay. talking about your top other top five. Okay. Well, so, and it'll, it'll be really funny if it just turns into like a total bro, like taken 300 anchorman wedding crashers. Like <laughs> I would imagine the old version. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, real alpha two thousands. Okay. Sure. Uh, top five movies from the two thousands. So for the purists out there, we are not including 2010. I know everybody wants to include that last year as the last year of the mm-hmm. decade. I get mathematically that makes sense. But we're going from 2000 to 2009. Number five, Stephanie Mead, what do you have? Okay, so I have um, Mean Girls. Okay, yeah. That, I mean... Yeah, <laughs> no, a, no, oh, you, don't, you don't seem surprised at all. You're like, that makes sense. <laughs> well, no. It, because it's such a good movie and can you, I mean, I'll, I'll let you talk about it. I mean, when you have that many lines enter the zeitgeist and people quote your movie, I mean, come on, talk about it. That's it. That's really the only movie that I'm able to actually quote on a regular basis to pretty much anybody. And they all have such, re- and it takes place in the Northern suburbs of Chicago anyway. And I'm from the Chicagoland area. So I automatically kind of have to like it. But you have all of these really great actors and actresses in it that are so hysterical when you get them all together. It's just such a funny movie <laughs> and it's wildly inappropriate in spots. It's just, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't necessarily like encompass of actual real high school experience. When does it, when does a, a Hollywood movie ever? But um, mm-hmm. no, it's just like a funny movie. You get all these one really good one liners. And I used to love Lindsay Lohan. And I feel like that was her peak. And I'm like, she's great. She's awesome. So that's why I love them. That's not necessarily number five as a whole. That could probably be my number one, but it's definitely, definitely one of the better movies. I totally agree. It's one of those movies too, that when you haven't seen it in a while and you go back, you're like, oh man, they got all these people before they were huge, you know, Lizzie yeah. Kaplan as the goth, and now she's gone on to do some great things in television and movies, and right. obviously Amy Poehler and Tim Meadows and all the SNL people for that Tina Fey knew. Yep. Um, and there's other great side characters in there as well. Uh, so that's a that's a wonderful pick. I don't have it in my top five, but again, oh, I'm, okay. I'm the, the dude bro, so I don't have it in the top. But but I yeah. do have it written down. I do enjoy that. Movie. I feel like a lot of dudes can quote that movie though, and do quote that movie. <laughs> Uh, also my birthday is October 3rd. So I resent oh, that movie for that reason. <laughs> On October 3rd, he asked me what day it was. It's October 3rd. So I get mean girls day. There you go. I'm happy to share it though. Uh, okay. So my number five for you, uh, was one that I did not originally have written down, but you know, when I went through this, I wanted to be as honest as I possibly could. Um, 
are these the five best movies of the decade? Maybe not. These are my five favorites that have stuck with me. They're in my DNA. Like they just became a part of me. Like uh, right. there will be blood, no country for old men. Love those movies. They're critically acclaimed and I'll watch them over and over again. And I had them in my top five, but when I'm honest with myself, I had to kind of knock them down a little bit. My number right. five from Tim Burton, 2003, we have big fish. Okay. I don't think I've seen that movie. <laughs> so I'm that's so fine. sorry. No, like remember with the Christmas songs, we had homework. We had to go listen to the terribleness. Now we have the good yeah. homework. We get to watch the good movie that was recommended okay. by a Perfect. So Big Fish, uh, long story short, mm-hmm. Billy Crudup uh, plays a guy and his dad is near death. And he's always had a kind of a rift with his dad because his dad's a one of those schmoozer talkers, tells a story. He knows everybody. Sure. And when you grow up in that shadow, you kind of resent it a little bit. And it's just the fantastical story of that man's life that he tells about when he met his love as a young man and went on the road with the circus and Danny DeVito is the ringmaster. And so there's just a lot of weirdness and coolness. And as somebody who just loves a good story, mm-hmm. it's great. Tim Burton can be a little too weird, uh, but this one uh, he was able to rein in a little bit. It was great. I love Tim Burton. He is, but I like Tim Burton when he's doing like the claymation animation like stuff <laughs> and so, the yeah, creepy Nightmare Halloween Christmas. stuff. Yeah. yeah, Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> I think he did like the Corpse Bride and all of that jazz. So like yeah. when he's doing that animation, when he has like Johnny Depp doing like Edward Scissorhands, like <laughs> that stuff's always interesting. But I'll definitely, you know what's great? When it gets cold this weekend, you can probably watch all of these movies. Uh, so that'll be on my list for sure. Good, good, good. Yeah, okay. it's, uh, I don't know where it's streaming, but we'll find all that later on. All right. There's so many streaming number services. Five. Yeah. Um, um, so... <laughs> Uh, so don't make fun of me for this one. Um, I just really, I, I, I love this movie just because it reminds me of my family. Um, my big fat Greek wedding. (gasps) And I know, (laughs) I know, I know it's not like cinematography, like brilliance or anything like that, but it is so funny and it is just so cute. And I love how they just portray I'm not Greek, but my family is Italian. So they're one in the same, almost very similar. And you have like mm-hmm. the very tight knit core group family of even the aunts and the uncles. And that's kind of how we all are as a family. And everyone knows everybody's business and everybody wants everyone <laughs> just to be happy. And so it's, I love it just because of the whole family dynamic behind it. And of course, again, it takes takes place in Chicago. I'm not I'm not picking only places that take place in Chicago. Movies in Chicago, but um, no, I I thought it was such a cute movie, and I just it makes me happy every single time it's on. I know it's cheesy, but it's 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 a good one. Look, if there was a if there's a tagline for this podcast, it is no apologies. This is your okay. top five. <laughs> uh, there's. That's a great part of, of moviedom is it's supposed to also make you feel good. It, not everything has to be so super gritty and dark and, and deep. Like so sometimes depth, you just enjoy, yeah. like, uh, like I said, we, I did the top five nineties movies, you know, Tommy yeah. boy yeah. is not going to win an Oscar, but <laughs> no. it's the best. It's great. It is a great movie and everybody on some level knows it. And who doesn't enjoy Chris Farley? So I think, that it, this movie just kind of brings smiles. It's it's you don't have to think too hard when you watch. Have you seen it? I have. I was going to ask you. Did you see the sequel? Did it yeah. hold up? It, yep. Was it? Did it? Uh, I thought it was pretty good. It, I thought okay. it was good. It wasn't anything too wild. I I like that they were able to incorporate a daughter into it and trying to tell the same story almost from her perspective too. So it was. It's just cute. It's. it's mm-hmm. I don't know. It's. It's just such a lighthearted, fun movie. Well, I'm not going to spoil what might be your number one, but now I have a real big guess what might be your number one favorite movie from the 2000s. Oh, no. I think you might be right, though, on what yeah. it is. I'm a, li- okay. I'm a little nervous. You might know what it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so my number five for you is Big Fish. My number four, uh, early in the decade, uh, I went through as as much as I could from the mo- year 2000, uh, High Fidelity with John Cusack and, and Jack Black. Um, mm. it's based on a Nicholas Sparks, not Nicholas Sparks. That's walk to remember. I was about to say uh, that sounds, 
that sounds like a dark Nicholas Sparks book. <laughs> yeah, Nick Nick Hornsby, Nick Hornsby. Uh, okay, I think he also did Perks of Being a Wallflower. Anyway, uh, John Cusack plays a record store owner, and okay. his couple of Jack Black and Mike White play his lackeys that work uh, uh, in the store. And he's honestly kind of the impetus for this podcast because he lives his life by top fives, top five. Okay top five love songs, top five heartbreak songs. And he uh, starts his own record label and calls it top five records. Um, Mm -hmm. There's just something great about that movie where Jack Black, first of all, that's his, that's what shot him to superstardom was that movie where he was just wacky Barry. And there's something universal about it too. When you think about your exes and you think about who you've dated in the past and how that's changed you as a person and why didn't it work out with this one? Why didn't it work out with that one? And also the, the irony of you finally actually get to go check back in with an ex and you're like, Oh yeah, Yeah. I I can't stand you. That's why we broke up. (laughs) You know, (laughs) rose colored lenses make you think you're missing it. Don't. So uh, because of the effect it had on me as a younger guy, when I watched it for the first time and the fact that I'm so obsessed with, categorizing my life and, and being very chronological and analytical and top five and all that, I got to include high fidelity in my top five. Okay. Well, I haven't seen that one either. I have a feeling I'm going to be saying that for a lot of your top fives and I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's all right. I mean, these are, it's not, they're not deep cuts I'm, because they have to be, but they're just, they mean a lot I, to me. Okay. So guess what? I'll probably, I'm going to have to watch that one too. Mm-hmm. Um, you might actually, you, you actually, most certainly have seen my number three. Um, I chose V for Vendetta, which is going off. <laughs> That's a real, no, that, that I enjoy this. Go keep going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't know. I just, I enjoyed that movie. It's, um, and I've watched it a little bit more. I think the last time I watched it was probably a few months ago. It just has this very eerie and creepy feeling to it. And it's almost like, you're watching it almost happen now in like a real life sense. You're just like, Oh my God, this is so creepy. There's too many parallels, but I don't know. I just think that the whole idea behind the movie itself is just, it's cool. It's a long movie. I will give it that. It's a little long, but it just, it keeps you on your toes and it keeps you entertained. And I love Natalie Portman. I think she's the cutest and I think she does a great job acting. So I'm happy that she was in the movie too, just because I really enjoy her. But yeah, that movie, um, it's not all happy at all, really, but I just thought it was it was fun to watch, like, in a really creepy and eerie way. That is fascinating, because I wondered, I had a feeling you'd have some girly stuff, you know, the, the mean girl type stuff. But I yeah. was wondering if there's going to be anything that's a little darker or a little deeper, and I was scrolling through my phone just looking at 2000s movies right before this i was like i wonder if v for vendetta is going to be on our list because that's a really great movie uh yep. it was one of my sister's favorites growing up uh she was obsessed with it in middle school high school um you're right it's weird how things when they're and it's it kind of scary when it's supposed to be dystopian and it's like yep. this is a bad future to look forward to and it's starting to kind of ring true in certain ways and you're like oh, right yeah. And you know, it's, I don't know, it, it gives you an unsettling feeling too, but you can, you know, you can also say that too. I'm not sure if you've seen, Oh, what is that? It's on Hulu. It's like a, a series, the handmaid's tale, almost a little oh, bit. Yeah. Some yeah. it's, and I've watched a few seasons of that and then I kind of stopped because it gets really heavy and really kind of just dark. And sometimes you don't need that stuff. I mean, I listen to true, <laughs> true crime podcasts like, like every morning. So that's enough for me. <laughs> but um, some of the stuff that they're coming out with right now is just like, and just in general, just is a little too eerie for me. So I kind of, this, but this movie as a whole, I think is really good. And it's just super entertaining. That Was that good. on your list at all? Uh, for you? Or on my list? No, for you. Yeah. It was not on my list. Um, I did. I didn't write it down, but I did go through it. And I was like, I, "That is a good movie," but it didn't. Yeah. It didn't strike me as much as it struck others. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, my number three for you, and I'm really hoping you've seen at least one of mine, but we'll see. I know. Me too. <laughs> um. My number three is from Quentin Tarantino. It is Inglorious Bastards. 
Um, I think I have seen that's with Brad Pitt, right? Yeah, he's the uh, okay. Aldo Rain. Okay, the, so yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah. bits in, I've seen bits and pieces of it. Um, it's is that also a very long movie? Oh yeah. Okay, then I mean I've seen bits and pieces. I have a very hard time sitting through very long movies. <laughs> Yeah, well, falling asleep is one thing. Uh, also, keeping yep. attention. Uh, but yep. being a movie guy, uh, Tarantino is, is my favorite director. I just love a lot of his stuff. And mm-hmm. uh, it's Brad Pitt, super funny. You've got uh, all the different storylines. You've got Hans Landa uh, as the evil SS guy. He's so yep. evil. You see what happens to him is great. Uh, the French Melanie Laurent, she plays the movie theater owner. I mean, mm-hmm. the, the music, the the bar scene, all the tension that he's able to build while they play the game. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to give away too much, but it, if we're going to talk about, you know, like bro movies, this is probably sure. pretty, pretty bro-y. Uh-huh. Um, but it's so well done and the music is great and it's, you know, historical fiction. I mean, it's like, what if you we got to do this to you know, the evils in the past. Like that's kind of sure. cool. Uh, and yeah. just super. I feel like that would be on my brother's list. I'm sure he's seen it and you know, he's a bro and I'm just like, okay, Robbie, <laughs> he, he, he's, <laughs> he's, that's probably cause he also loves Nicholas cage too. So I'm sure he's seen the uh, high, high fidelity. Is that correct? That movie? <laughs> yes. Yeah. No? High okay. Fidelity. No, okay. High okay. Fidelity. Yes. Yes. Um, do you, so my number two, I'm sure you've seen this movie. Um, it's Mr. Deeds. With Adam. What? <laughs> yeah. Number two of the, okay. <laughs> Keep going. Yep, Mr. Deeds. Um, I just love Adam <laughs> is, oh. is that Is that wrong? No, it's that just, wrong? I'm so surprised. Um, I'm so surprised. I just think it's funny. Anytime it's on TV, I'm just like, this is gold. It is so cute. And uh, Winona, I like Winona Ryder in it. And uh, obviously Adam Sandler is hysterical. And so, and I grew up with the SNL because my I have aunts that are only like a, 10 years older than I am. So when they would babysit, we'd watch like the uh, Saturday Night Live stuff. So we'd like grew up on Tommy not Tommy Boy, but obviously Tommy Boy, um, like Chris Farley and David Spade and all that. So when those movies came out with Adam Sandler, like all of that stuff, like we would just watch that stuff nonstop. So it's just, it brings back like those memories with my aunts, but also like, they're just funny. They're just so wildly out there and they just keep you entertained and laughing. So it's just, it's, it's it was just like kind of a funny movie. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no deep meaning behind it. There's, <laughs> no there's deep nothing meaning. wrong with that pick. I'm just fascinated. I'm trying to picture you and me on a Friday night at Blockbuster trying to get the same movie that we would both watch. And it's just, it's not going to happen. I don't think. No, <laughs> it's, it's really difficult. Imagine. So I have like three other, I have three brothers and sisters. And that was the issue growing up too, is everyone trying to figure out what movie to get. Cause we all just had different tastes. It was yeah, tough, it, but it always turned into my sister and I always renting Hocus Pocus because that's the only one we could both agree on. Even uh, in even in the summer months. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, I wanted like Sandlot and other stuff, and she wanted other that's stuff. A good one. Like, Hocus Pocus, or uh, I mean, we had VHS at the house, like a few mm-hmm. titles. So we like Home Alone two, which okay. again, not a summer movie, but we no. still watch it. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, so. That's hilarious. Mr. D's is number two. Oh my God. <laughs> so my number two for you, I know you have not seen. Uh, oh, okay, great. I'll be fascinated if you have, um, but I, I don't think you have. It's from 2000, another early one. Actually, I just okay. realized three of my movies are from 2000. That's kind of weird. Um, so this movie is more of a philosophical movie where uh, on the surface, it's not too deep it's kind of just a a story about a guy uh but it makes you ponder things and it makes you think it kind of makes you look inward at least it did for me especially when i saw it it was recommended to me by my uncle phil who is 13 years older than me so young uncle felt like a big brother like you had your Mm -hmm. sisters um it's the Tao of steve um nope yeah it's very (laughs) deep cut i very not very many people have heard of it at all 
um, but like TAO, like Taoism, the Eastern religion okay. philosophy. Oh, uh, the Tao of Steve. And basically, this it's a story of a guy who's uh, overweight and he smokes pot and he's a part time kindergarten teacher. He's on the surface, very schlubby loser. Yeah. And he, he dates nothing but tens, like his whole life. And so they're like, how does this guy Dex, how does he do this? And there's a, uh, it's a mantra to being like Dow of Steve, like Steve is the ultimate American cool guy, Steve McGarrett, Steve McQueen, like James mm-hmm. Bond is a Steve, you know, it's a, yeah. it's a mindset. And essentially it's be desireless, be excellent, be gone. You know, it's, it's a detachment. So there's a lot of like from Lao Tzu, there's a lot of detachment uh, and Taoism behind it. And what's great about it is at the end, sorry to spoil it, but he learns that that's not the best way to live your life uh, in such a shallow way. You might want to be a better person. Um, and so I always kind of took that into uh, into my life, into yeah, and try to be in a, in a positive way. Like nobody's out of your league. You know, when people sure. say, like, oh, she's, she's out of your league or there's no way you could get with him. Like, no, that doesn't exist. Like my mindset can't allow that. And a lot of that came from being a Steve from the Dow of Steve. Yeah. And, and it's just a really cute, fun movie. Like it's, sure. it's on the, like I said, on the surface, it's dumb. It's, it's got some really good music. Um, mm-hmm. But then, yeah, the guy falls for the girl. That's just how that goes. So you I know what it record. sounds like? It sounds like um, a more deep version of Shallow Hell. Have you seen that movie mm-hmm. <laughs> with Jack Black? <laughs> Please tell me that's your number one. Please tell me that's your number one. <laughs> it is not. It is not my number one. You said you think you know my number one, so I want to let you have a chance to guess. Um, just uh, guess. <laughs> all right. Well, I don't want to be right and ruin it, but... It, all right. I hope I'm wrong. Number one for you would be Legally Blonde? Oh, yes. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> I love that movie. Um, Reese Witherspoon, she's adorable, but I don't know. I just like whenever I'm having like a really crummy day or like a really crummy like couple of days. And I know it sounds so dumb, but it's just like she I just I like her like confidence in herself and her just perseverance throughout. I know that sounds so stupid, but it's just like it just it's such a good motivating movie when when you don't necessarily get what you think you want, you end up getting something entirely better, if not more. And she looks cute while doing it. People totally judge her on what she looks like and what she wears, but she's able to blow past that type of like, I don't know, uh, I'm spacing on the word, but she's able to kind of get past some of those preconceived notions of herself. And it's great and I love it. And it's cute too, because I mean, are you really going to end up defending a case because someone got a perm? No, but like, <laughs> it's, just, it's just, it's an adorable movie. And I just think that it's so awesome that she was able to be herself the entire time and it all just worked out. So I don't know. I think that the whole idea behind it is great and it's executed cutely too, because I don't know, it's also kind of goofy. So <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I think you, you nailed it. And, uh, I don't want to put this on the movie because I don't think they did it on purpose and I don't know that it's anybody's fault, but I feel like that type of movie, especially the name of it, Legally Blonde, the way it was marketed, the way the the trailer, when it came out, you know, she's portrayed as like the dumb ditzy blonde, like what, you know, Yeah. but it's a lot deeper than that. It's like, no, there's a lot more to it and you can really take a lot from that. And it's a lot about expectations versus reality versus, you know, like you're talking about perseverance, like rising above what people think about you and kind of ignoring that. I mean, I didn't put it in my top five. It is an honorable mention. Um, Yeah. uh, The movie School of Rock with Jack Black. I, is that your number one? It's not my number one. Okay. I was going to say, I knew that was going to be somewhere in at least somewhere. I knew it was going to get mentioned because that is a good movie. I was going to put that as my honorable mention because it's, it's just phenomenal. funny. Well, and it's, it, to me, it's similar to Legally Blonde where on the surface, it's just kind of this cookie cutter type movie. But really, you know, I think there's a meme that's been going around like, no, Jack Black in 2003 released a movie where he told kids they were fine who they were. You know, if there's a, a kid who's 
sensitive about their weight or they're, you know, they maybe they're a homosexual or maybe they're, you know, they're questioning who they are or their identity, whatever. It was yeah. all inclusive. Everybody's in, everybody's in the band. Everybody has a part. And it was just so inspiring. Um, mm -hmm. And it just, he's Jack Black. I mean, he's hilarious. It, so he when is. couple <laughs> that with that, uh, again, Reese Witherspoon being so cute and being very funny and having that confidence mm -hmm. in that character, I think it says a lot. Um, it does. But, the movie I thought you might have a number one too, because your first two included Chicago. I thought your number one would be the movie Chicago, the musical that came out in 2002. Uh, oh, no. Could but have been. Is that yours? Could have been. It's not. No, I keep, just keep naming oh, the movie. I'm sorry. It's not. <laughs> uh, no, I thought you might have because of the Chicago thing, but I have uh, Big Fish at Five, High Fidelity Four, Inglorious Bastards, Dow of Steve, my number one for you from the year 2000. It was a great year for film. Uh, I'm hoping you've heard of it. Uh, I don't oh, know if you've seen it. I feel like it was on TV a lot. So it's like a Shawshank okay. thing where maybe you saw it on TNT. Uh, oh, Brother, Where Art Thou? Is uh, my uh, yes. What, do you want to know where I saw that, though? I saw it in school. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. Where yeah, did you go to it school? Has, um, they, it has George Clooney in it, right? Yeah. And two other gentlemen. I don't know their names, but it's... it's um. Oh no, it's where they're on the run, right? They're oh, did you read it? Did you watch it because you read the Odyssey in English class? Well, funny story actually with the Odyssey. I, we were supposed to read it, but I never ended up. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> well, we did yeah. have to read the Odyssey. Um, I str actually, we had to write a paper on it. I'm not super proud of this, but it's, it's a funny story looking back. Um, I ended up basing my paper off of a Simpsons episode of the Odyssey. Um, <laughs> <did it do? laughs> the teacher watching did this is do? so pissed right now. Well, no, he knew. He was like, did you read the book? I go, no. <laughs> and he's no. like, let me give you a redo. I'm like, okay, thanks. But it's the book is this thick. It's this thick. I didn't want to read it. But anyway, um, we did end up watching it in class. So, and it was actually very, very good. I think it was because um, it was similar to Of Mice and Men. And we yeah. read that book um, in school. So I think they try and correlated it a little bit with that. But I enjoyed well, it. A, it was a great movie. Well, Of Mice and Men, that's a much shorter book. So I hope you were able to get through that one. I was able <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it was it's a perfect uh example of the coen brothers genius again i said no mm -hmm. country for old men i'd like to include that in my top five i love that movie i thought javier bardem was great one of the best villains of all time but this movie has always stuck with me i watched it when i was a kid i watched it when i was a teenager i watch it now mm -hmm. as an adult and uh the soundtrack kicks ass george clooney's hilarious and again, the genius of the Coen brothers, where you take this, the Odyssey, you know, you've got Odysseus and he's battling the Cyclops and the sirens and the sea to get mm -hmm. home and to just convert that into an allegory to the South uh, during the thirties. And just, it's mm -hmm. just brilliant. It's beautiful. The sepia tone throughout. Um, I, I just, I, it will always be a, a top favorite of mine. Yeah. No, it was definitely a good movie. I always remember enjoying it whenever it would pop on. And it's, it's still stuck with me too, because I remember, yeah, a lot of the movie is kind of in that like old timey filter type of, of shot, mm -hmm. like you mentioned before. So yeah, no, I think that's a great movie and I'm happy that I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> we got one finally. Yeah, we did. <laughs> um, so what did you have that you thought I might have? Other oh, than School goodness. of Rock. Anything? I, I thought you would have had Taken on there for sure. Because everyone was in yep. love with that movie for the longest time. So I thought Taken really cool. would have been on there. And I thought it was a really goofy era. I thought for sure maybe Superbad would have been on there. Or 40-year-old version. <laughs> you're hitting a lot of my honorable mentions. Okay. Uh, big fan um, of Taken. Big fan of Superbad, Yes. Yeah, or Napoleon Dynamite. Um, oh, I knew that <laughs> you're crushing it. You're crushing it. Great. I'm hitting all the goofy ones. You have all like the insightful and deep ones in your top five. No, no, five. no, no. <laughs> High Fidelity and Dow Steve are not insightful. I mean, I you get what you want out of a movie, right? Sure. Like, you can watch Legally Blonde and be like, this is just a dumb comedy chick flick, sure. or you can get some meaning out of it. And that's kind of what I sure. got from mine. 
Yeah. So I thought I th and I thought for sure Dark Knight would have been on yours because I feel like that's on every guys just because mm -hmm. I mean it's good. I it wasn't my I wasn't a fan of Dark Knight. I'm also just not a fan of Batman in general or any of like is it a Marvel movie or is it what? a DC? I know, I'm sorry. I know it's not a popular opinion, but it's hard for me to sit through some of those. <laughs> We couldn't get through the Christmas episode with you trashing without you trashing Taylor Swift. And now you're going to say you don't like Batman. Like, what are you doing? I'm sorry. I just, there's Your something brand about is it. all just, over the place. I know it's, um, I don't know. I don't, who is the actor who does play Batman in that movie? Um, Christian Bale. His, yes. I'm not really a fan of him too, too much. Okay. So that's fair. I, <laughs> so, um, I don't know. He creeps me out a little bit. So I'm just like, oh, let's kind of steer clear. <laughs> uh, no, that that's fair. And honestly, Dark yeah. Knight I had written down because of I mean, and because of Heath Ledger. I mean, it's a great movie, but it's yes. his portrayal as the Joker that is just all timer. And I, I agree. I think, I think he did good in that movie. He did well. Like I've seen bits and parts of it. I haven't sat through, sat through the whole thing, <laughs> but overall, like, You're so funny. I know, I know I'm, I'm very odd when it comes to what movies like really get me and what movies don't, I just, I have to be able to relate to it a little bit in order for me to kind of like it. I know I don't relate really to V for Vendetta hardly at, at all, but that's just kind of like a cool little creepy movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's true. And well, if you show up with a shaved head someday, that will know that, that would be a problem. Gone awfully wrong. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Britney Spears circa 2007. You'd be like, what is going on with her? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you you nailed it. I, there were a couple. Casino Royale, the James Bond movie okay. I love. And uh, this is a this is a dumb pick, but I don't care. I just love Pirates of the Caribbean, the first one. Oh, the I, I love Pirates of the Caribbean. They're, they're great movies. The music's fantastic. I think that's why I like uh -huh. it a lot. Yeah, Hans Zimmer, if he's doing the music, I'm going to love the movie. Um, I Actually, I thought that you would have that one. I thought you would have pirates of some kind. The only okay. ones I wrote down that you didn't have that I thought you might was Mama Mia and uh -uh. Sweet Home Alabama, <laughs> which I knew you'd have. Okay, Reese. I I um I actually just recently watched that movie this past weekend, and it was an honorable mention. I do I like that movie a lot. Um, not so much that it would be a top five, but mm -hmm. I think it's a really cute movie. I like it a lot. And the last one is Juno. I thought you might have that. I it's a quirky this, one. Yeah, I watched. You either this love it or you kind of hate it. So yeah, I I don't think I've sat all the way through Juno. I know the I know the idea of it. I don't. <laughs> I don't want to be rude. Have you ever it's sat through? You left and right. <laughs> no, have you ever sat through a, a movie at all, like the entire yeah, thing? Yeah, all, all of my top fives, I have <laughs> sat through various times. I've sat and watched them. And I physically have picked them out. I'm like, let's watch this movie. <laughs> okay, no, that's fair. Because I was, you're like, I've seen bits and pieces. I've seen, but like, you're just constantly have movies around you that you're not watching is just very funny to me. Well, also, um, I fall asleep very easily. <laughs> so whenever there I'm watching is. a movie, well, when you get up, I usually get up at like two, three in the morning. And once you like make it dark and you turn on the TV, Oh my god, I'm it's it's a lose lose for me. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> fall asleep. That is or a good I'll point. fall asleep. I'll fall asleep in a movie theater too, just because it's dark and and mm -hmm. but now the seats are comfortable, so you get to lay back. So I'm just <laughs> down and out for the count. It's tough sometimes. Oh, that's hilarious. All right. Well, this was a lot of fun as I knew it would be. Uh it was yeah. definitely much more positive than the Christmas songs we had. The Christmas one, yeah, uh, for sure. Our top, oh, we should have had like, oh, Elf, that was 03. Oh, oh that, that's a good one, but still not one of my top fives. Like, I'm not going to go out of my way to watch Elf. Same, but if it's on, but I love it. I'm glad I mentioned it, though, because I would have felt bad for having left it out. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Stephanie Mead, thank you so much. Where can mm -hmm. people find you? All that good stuff. You're active on the Twitter and the Instagram and all that yeah. good stuff. You bet. Yeah. So um, you can find me on Instagram, Stephanie Mead WX. Also, I think it's the same on Twitter. I did have to change my handle. I think it's either Steph Mead WX or Stephanie Mead WX. And then I'm on Facebook too. Still have not ventured into TikTok yet. That is too, you're, you're brave. too scary. I know it is yeah. too scary for me. Uh, I like gonna... watching them. <laughs> <laughs> I it's cannot do them. Suck. I've, it so is. I'm the opposite. I don't watch it, but I'll put clips of this show on there. And so, okay. 
that way it's there and people can enjoy it if they want to, but I don't want to get sucked in. I know. Uh, I feel you because you will. (laughs) You definitely mm -hmm. will. All right, Steph, thank you so much uh, for being up past your bedtime since you have to get up at two uh, tomorrow. (laughs) Uh, We'll talk to you soon, dear. All right. Thanks for having me on. Bye.